This is Prince George's County Executive Rashawn Baker, and you're listening to the Maryland Crabs Podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Hey, it's the Maryland Crabs. It's Thursday. It's noon. That means we need to talk about something, right? Uh, I didn't plan ahead. Ah, uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we're just joking. No, you would think few people may know Tim, and you may know that he doesn't plan ahead. But in fact, this time we did plan ahead a little bit. Well, actually, we did kind of screw up there because uh, we were all set to record, and I said, "Well, I guess you're not coming." Yeah, I got the text. I was <laughs> so it was like yeah, it was Saturday morning, and it's like ten ten oh eight, and I get the text from John going, "So are you coming or what?" I'm like. Uh, <laughs> What? And then I looked, I saw the text I missed the day before saying 10 a.m. So I booked over, threw a hat on and booked over. And I stalled. Unshowered. I stalled. I stalled. I stalled. I stalled. But before we get into it, just thank you all for your ratings, your comments, and everything else. Uh, We are on Spotify now. We're everywhere you can get your podcasts. Mm -hmm. And go to all those places and give us ratings, however the hell they rate it. They give it a review. Give us a review. And right now, what I'd like you to do is like, Maybe if, you, if you're listening to this, click a share button, share it with your friends, share it with your coworkers or whatever, and let them know about the Maryland crabs and, you know, all the cool stuff that we talk about. Your boss. Um, don't off. let them know about the shitty stuff we talk about. Just tell them about the cool stuff. Like we had Hogan. Cool stuff. On. That was kind of cool. Bob okay. Moser. Yeah. Chris Trumbauer was last week, and he's always a lot of fun getting some insight on his last year in office. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a lot of fun to talk to. We have we have our, our regulars now that we're kind of going back to because they're just really easy going. They kind We've of got to buy like... Um, T-shirts or sweatshirts, like, you know, Saturday Night Live does the jackets. We joked about that with Trumbo. Five-timers. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. You're great. You're yeah. great. Yeah, we should probably do that. We should probably get, like, a T-shirt and then, like, a sweatshirt for... Yeah. And a secret handshake. We'll see. We'll figure that out. But, yeah, no, we've got uh, former Attorney General Doug Gansler, who will be coming on fairly soon. We are going to be talking again after you hear this episode. We're going to be talking again with the Annapolis Police Department. It gave me a warning for blowing a stop sign and... Now nah, they were good. Um, that's right. Antagonize them. Yeah, that's right. Hey, that's fine. I've done it before. Where's my bike? Uh, uh. <laughs> you thought you were over that. But yeah, no, share this. Let people know about the Maryland Crabs. Also let them know about the Daily News Brief, which is the Ion Annapolis daily podcast we do every Monday through Friday. It goes out at 7 a.m. now, which is a new time. It used to be at noon. So I'm getting up a little bit earlier to get this here. What time do you get it for that? Um, I put some of it together the night before, depending on what it is, and I hold it out until about six o'clock, and then I check to see if there's anything that broke overnight, and insert that and let it roll. That is early. Yeah, so it's uh, it's it's prepared by about six fifteen, and last couple of days I have been able to get to the rec center by six forty five. I'm still not up yet at that uh, point. Yeah, well, that's because you're still hungover. But anyhow, this week's episode, we are going to speak with Dewan Gay, who is a former automatic candidate for Ward 6. He is not an intern, but he's working for the Maryland State Assembly. He's a student at University of Maryland Eastern Shore, going to be transferring to Bowie State. The kid that hustled his ass and got 60 air conditioners for the people that were sweating their asses off this summer in public housing. Uh, Didn't wait around for anything. And it all stems off of a Facebook post he put out on January 2nd. And I'm just going to read that, and then we're going to go into a break, and then we'll go right back into Dewan. And i got to explain, if you are not on the Eastport Forum, if you're in Annapolis, and I know that other parts of the state, they have their equivalent, but in Annapolis, that's the most active forum in town. It's the most active place you go to find out what's going on, and a lot of stuff happens there. And actually, we get a lot of ideas for what we do from taking the temperature in there. And Dwan is just, he's one of the regular posters in there. You know, a lot of provocative and, and I mean, discussions. He stirs the pot. I'm not, you know. Yeah, but he doesn't do it to be an ass. I mean, he, he, no, 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 no. There he, are some that will do that. Yeah. He'll, he'll jump in and he'll, he'll start really good discussions. And you, you see, and like we talk about uh, later on in the, 
interview is that some really good stuff comes out of that to be honest with you um that you know he's really had some good questions and and i've seen some people be civil you know it's gotten a little heated but i mean he's there with like all the regular posters i was i was talking to him today about the h&m have you heard about that controversy the h&m controversy with the, the shirt yeah yeah and it has a picture of a of a little a, bl- a black kid with a sweatshirt that says coolest monkey in the jungle yeah. or something like that yeah social media blew up on that and every everybody blew up on that and you know, Dewan was saying, you know, is this just the marketing arm of H and M looking to create controversy? It's like they're the new Benetton. Yeah, it could very well be. But somebody else was discussing earlier, and I put this out there. It was an original thought, but you've got to find out what the context was. Was this kid, you know, in a green suit, and they photoshopped this these pants and sweatshirt onto him? If he wasn't, and it was a live shoot. You know, where were the parents? Where were the chaperones? I think at this point, whenever someone puts out something that's offensive or some newspaper, magazine, something that offends a group of people, I think you have to assume that they didn't mean to do it. As someone who's in marketing, I understand that that's the last thing you want to do is tick people off. So just just assume that they were tone deaf, which it, were, it, it might have been stupid to do, but it wasn't intentionally meant to. I mean, it could have been just something that the person that put it on just didn't read what the heck the saying was. Yeah. It, I mean, who knows? But again, he brought the question up and he does bring these questions up time and time again. And I think they're very, very valid, especially this one you commented on his and a number of different ones there. But let me just read this Facebook post from January 2nd. We're going to go into a quick commercial and then we'll be back with Dewan Gay. Three plus cop cars, three plus officers, 30 minute traffic stop with no explanation on why I was being held for so long. I was pulled over for quote, not making a complete stop at the stop sign, unquote. Me and three friends sat for 30 minutes while they tampered around trying to find anything, all caps. They finally blamed the long wait on, quote, failed computers. Thanks to Nevin Young for meeting me this late at night, and we were honestly afraid. And Dewan had called, and when he wasn't able to get an answer out of the police officers, he called Nevin Young, who ran for mayor of Annapolis and is an attorney in town, happened to live right up the road from where he was pulled over for assistance. And that just seemed a little bit extreme to me. The stop seemed a little bit extreme based on his information. And we just wanted to talk to him about it. And it was a great conversation. He's a lot of fun. We're going to have him back because he was a lot of fun. Tawan is good. I like I like him. He's we don't, we don't agree on a lot of things, but he's going places. Yeah, he is. He's a sharp guy. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Whether it's Main Street, your street, or any street in the county that we all live in and love and call Anne Arundel, it's a special place. But part of living here is having a bank that provides what you need when you need it. So when your plans and dreams call for a bank, turn to us, your neighbor. We're Severn Bank, supporting the community that supports us. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman of Severn Bank. And it's our honor to be the bank that serves the people of Anne Arundel County. One thing that we never forget is that as a member of this community, it's our responsibility to be committed to helping you and our county thrive. Like you, we live here, we work here, and we play here. Severn Bank, we're here with you. Online at SevernBank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Severn Bank is a trade name used by Severn Savings Bank. And we are here with former aldermanic candidate and probably potential future one, if not for something else, but Dewan Gay. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good. We haven't talked since you were a candidate. We yeah. were on the steps of Key School outside yep. <laughs> listening on a beautiful summer day. And right now we're in the throes of winter where it's uh, minus two degrees. Or something. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> well, I know. But we had like two inches of snow and everybody went into a panic. And <laughs> All my friends on Facebook from Pennsylvania like, so did you cancel school? And I was like, yeah, we did. 
You say, can you see the tips of your grass? And I'm like, yeah, you can. <laughs> We're the worst. It was that wind chill. It was that wind chill that was the worst. It still is. It's horrible now. It's what, like nine or 10 degrees out right now when we're recording this? It's awful. I hate this. It's pretty, it is pretty cold. But what we want to do, we want to talk to you because, because of Facebook, because you know, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook is, Technology. Is, is, is everywhere. Well, we're a small pool here um, in Annapolis. So like yeah. we all see what's going on. We all kind of yeah. know each other, at least peripherally. So, yeah. you know, we saw everything that was kind of going on the other night, like live for the yeah. most part. Yeah. And a l- little bit of a backstory and I can somewhat relate to, but Doan was out with some friends about a week and week, week and a half ago yeah. or something like that, was pulled over by Annapolis City Police Department for, they said, running a stop sign and felt that he was detained inordinately long. Not really even sure that he blew the stop sign. <laughs> Unlike me that knew, totally knew that he blew the stop sign. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's just go go into the story. What what, hap- what happened that night? Well, um, I think it's important the story because this is a podcast. People can't see anything. But Dewan, you are a black man. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of important. To the Absolutely, story. yeah. So I didn't know John noticed. but <laughs> yeah. No, pr- uh, I think what, um, and on the post, a lot of people were like, well, you know, why is this? So it's a picture of you. Yeah. With the flashing lights behind you. Yeah. So. And I, I just got a lot of feedback saying, you know, that I should be kind to cops and things like that, which I am. Uh, but there was just background to this previously. So um, I had an event at my um, house on New Year's. Um, what which, kind of event? A uh, party. An underage drinking mm-hmm. event? <laughs> no, we have we have friends over all, every New Year's. Prayer my meeting. mom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me, my two siblings, and my, my mom. And before the event started, there were cops right out front of my house before it even started and it was funny to me because i went to an event at bumpers two hours before and there was not a single cop near his house oh bumper moyer yeah right, right. yeah right L- literally two minutes <laughs> from going, my house where's bumpers i've never been yeah. oh bumper moyer yeah. now, yeah. and now bumper you... moyer is a also uh, was an aldermanic candidate yeah. for yeah. this past so year. he had a quick new year's get together and there was no problem there so they just i made a post about that literally two days before i got pulled over i'm about you know why is it that in hawker residence or hawker properties that there's an increase in police. I mean, clearly there's violence, but I want to celebrate the new year. Well, I forgot like I responded me. to that. I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd like to celebrate It was during my years. drinking time. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was weird because the same thing happened the year before, but uh, there was actually chaos afterwards. And I actually went down at the time when Haka had a uh, manager of like security and, and brought it to his attention. You know, people were maced. Uh, police officers were, you know... Just it was it was a crazy environment. This is at the time when Haka also had the uh, private eye security, which was completely unprofessional. So I just had bad experiences with cops around this time of the year. But with the traffic stop, me and three friends, well, it was actually me and um, four friends because I dropped one off at Severn House. But we left Eastport Terrace and we went through Madison because we passed like the little Eastport shopping center, like the tiny store that they have right. in the Eastport. Yeah, which is Sankey's, which was the unofficial mm-hmm. name. But yeah, we passed it there and there was a Maryland State Trooper on my right hand side just before the stop sign. So I was sure to stop. I didn't even know if he was in the car, but I think he just lives there now, but I know to stop. So I stopped right there. We kept on going. I went to through Severn House, dropped off my friend, and I came right back out, got on Bay Ridge, and a cop was right there. And sure enough, we got pulled over right at the intersection of Bay Ridge, Tyler, and Hilltop. Okay, so you've come essentially from the area of the Eastport Shopping Center. You had on the Back Creek side, yeah. I guess, taking a left on Bay Ridge to head out toward Forest Drive or whatever. Oh, towards, uh, we, we came uh, straight across almost. So we left out off of Madison and we went straight across to, uh, I'm not sure, what is the road that Severn House, the Severn House entrance is on? It's right uh, next to the Eastport Shopping Center. Yeah, I think Monroe. Yeah, Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, so we were right there. And then when we looped around and came back out, we got pulled over. Okay, so you actually got out on Bay Ridge, yeah. and, and they pulled you over just before where Bay Ridge hits Tyler yeah. and uh, yeah. Hilltop or whatever it is at that point. So you're heading downtown? No, no, no we were heading, heading towards... Out, out. Uh, the Smokehouse. Yeah, yep, towards uh, Smokehouse, yep. Oh, gotcha. So we uh, would have been getting on Bay Ridge Avenue. Again. Right, and yeah. then if you wanted to go back to President Street, you would like take a right on Tyler yeah. and then a right yeah. on President. Okay, so I know I know where you are. So all of a sudden you're driving along, you're happy, you got three other friends in the yeah. car with you at this point, Let blue lights light up, and you go, oh shit, which... <laughs> We all do. Um, I don't. Yeah, you always get out. I don't. I don't get tickets. Uh, and what happened? I mean, you had an uh, officer approach you, and yeah. So the officer came up, and the first thing she said out of her mouth was, "Was she black or white?" She was black. She was a okay. black officer. The first thing she said out of her mouth was, "You live on Frederick Douglass," and I was like, "Yes." 
And she said, well, why are you running from the cops? I'm like, <laughs> I'm not running from the cops. I didn't even see your lights until we got on Bay Ridge. And she's like, can I have your license and registration? I'm like, sure. Reached over, got my license registration. I handed it to her. I said, why are we getting pulled over? And she said, because you ran a stop sign. So I'm like, okay. I gave her my license and registration. At this time, I was like, okay, we're just going to get a ticket. I knew it. So I was like, here's my license registration. She went back to the car and we didn't hear from her for like 15 minutes. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm, get, I'm starting to get nervous. Me and my friends are getting antsy. Like, it's been 15 minutes. I know it n never takes that long to write a ticket or to even look me up in the system. So I think right around the 20 minute mark, um, I called the dispatch station and the non-emergency number and I asked, uh, if I could speak with the supervisor, the shift supervisor, I said, you know, I've been pulled over for about 20 minutes. The officer hasn't came back to my car. We have no reason why we're getting pulled over. Is this normal protocol? Can we talk to the supervisor? And they said, oh, the supervisor's out. He's in the field right now, so I'm not sure. He may be busy, but I don't know if this is normal protocol. Just, you know, get the badge number and things like that, and maybe we can help out later on. I was like, okay. So 30 minutes now comes by that we've been sitting here, and I'm like, what is going on? So I called Nevin Young, and I and called uh, Nevin Barbara Young Weber. is a former mayoral, mayoral yeah, candidate. Ma mayor right. Yeah, so I yeah, called. You guys all got tight. Everyone, all, all the candidates, the aldermanic candidates, yeah. and everyone got tight after the election. Yeah. Was... yeah, me, Bumper, and Nevin hang out all the time. And Nevin's an attorney. Attorney. Yeah, yep, yep. So he's an attorney. He lived, literally lived walking in walking distance. So I called him and I said, hey, we've been pulled over for about 30 minutes now and we're not sure if we're going to jail. Would you mind like coming down or telling me what I should do? Now, bear in mind, so as Dewan's telling us this, we're everyone's watching this kind of live on Facebook. It's yeah. not it's not Facebook live, but it's like we're watching the, there's the picture of Dewan pulled over and mm -hmm. then there's the comments underneath that. And then Nevin posts going, all right, getting my shoes on, going downtown to help a friend. Yeah. Know, so we're all yeah. watching this kind of unfold on Facebook right here. Yeah. So yeah, this is all happening and so Nevin shows up he takes him about five minutes to walk down and as, at the same time the soup the shift supervisor pulls up and he walks over to the car and he's like um hey we're sorry that we had to keep you this long um there's a problem with our computers and I was like oh okay um I said I you know I had to call an attorney because I was scared and he laughed because he didn't think I was serious. He was like, you called an Good attorney? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's literally standing right there. And he's like, oh, God. So he walks across the street and Nevin says to him, you know, it's against the Constitution to hold someone for longer than 20 minutes. And he says, Is oh, it? yeah, we know. Yeah, he is a summer. I'll see the Constitution. It's, 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 yeah. it's longer than reasonably needed to yeah. do to do the task that you were done for. So, right. I mean, if you're pulled over for murder or something like that, you could be held for as long as it takes him to investigate yeah. it. But a, a stop sign it should be as long as it takes to write a ticket for yeah. a stop sign. Yeah. Now, did they did they ask... Well, hold on, are you done with that? So the, the cop's talking to Nevin uh, at this Yeah, point. to Nevin, yeah. So he just tells him that, um, you know, this was... You shouldn't have held me this long. And the cop the says... Officer, yeah, he told say. him that um, it was because of the computer system. So he came back Which and, would be reasonable, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if the computer if the system computer's was right. down, yeah. So then he came back, and with like two minutes later, the original officer finally came back to the car, gave me my license and registration. And she says, here, I'm only getting you for running a stop sign. I could have got you for speeding and eluding officers, hmm. but I'm going to let it slide today. And I'm like... <laughs> What? Wait a minute. So now I want to know, like, why would we even be potentially you could why could you have even potentially charged us with eluding officers or speeding or anything when everything was within we literally had been within the same mile of each other. I didn't understand. Well, actually, so that, where you were leaving and we were coming out, that's probably not much more than, what, three blocks? Yeah, literally everything was, yeah, within that same space. So, I, I mean, you've also got an area where you it's very difficult to pull over. I mean, to be honest with you, I probably would have gone beyond that traffic signal and pulled over in front of like where that big old bus, they've got a yeah. big camper guy. Yeah. That's where John rear-ended someone last Is month. <laughs> I, well, I, well, I did. And the cops did say that their computer was down. I mean, I had a uh, little tear-off notepad with yeah. everybody's information. It wasn't a reportable but, accident. And I, and I actually believe that the computers were down until two days later, Nevin asked me, he said, look at the ticket. What time did it say that it was printed out? It was printed out at 1116 and we weren't let go until like 1125. So they printed it in between that time and still held it. Was up. the officer a very slow walker? <laughs> 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 from, from her car to yours? I just, yeah, that, 
and that just didn't make sense to me. So clearly you held me for almost 10 extra minutes with no reason, some sort of ulterior motive, if you did, ask me. Well, did they ask for identification from everybody else in the car? No, they didn't. It just me. I mean, I mean, my thought was that, okay, well, they were busy checking everybody else out to make sure that they didn't have warrants or... Well, I, think, I don't think they can do that. They probably, you're, you're right. They, probably uh, they don't can't. have probable cause. Yeah, um, no, but yeah, they just asked me for... So it was, it was, it was just Dewan Gay. Here's yeah. your license registration. Your license wasn't expired. Your registration was current. Yep. Your insurance was current. Yep. You may or may not have blown a, a stop sign. <laughs> um, you, you drive along and you may not... Yeah. You may think you come to a stop, and I mean, yeah. it, may, it may be very close to a stop. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is what so this is what it all boils down to at this point. So if I'm pulled over and I'm in your situation, I have the luxury as a white guy to go. Well, the system was probably done down, or something happened. I can be irritated or annoyed, but it would never occur to me, even if it was a black officer, there'd still never be a racial element to it because I had that luxury. I, I don't ever have to think about. It. Matter of fact, when I get pulled over for a ticket, which I do often, I never get a ticket. I ever, yeah. ever. And, and I know when I'm getting pulled over that I'm not getting a ticket. Um, is it because I'm white or middle-aged or devastatingly handsome? It's probably a mix <laughs> of all those things. But I never have to think about it. And so with your Facebook post, that opens up. And we've had a lot of discussions, yeah. a lot of great discussions based on a lot of your posts. You know, I agree with a lot of them. Some of them I... I don't disagree, but it, but I think it, but the discussions that we all have are really good because the two posts were this one, and then there was one we'll talk about a little bit was the police officer who was who was who was sitting outside yeah. of uh, was it your home? Yeah, yeah. I guess it was. Yeah, that was we're talking yeah. right. The same officer. <laughs> what was? Do you remember what her name was? I did not, and it was written in cursive on the ticket. So because it, it's funny because the the cop that I know uh, when I was telling him a story about when I got my uh, stop sign ticket or warning, the female was assigned to the I know she said that the female that approached me was assigned to the net duty which is the one that's assigned to um, Harbor House and Eastport Terrace just yeah. because of the rise in crime that's been there you know I, I would probably say for the most part when there's nothing else going on there typically is a cop in that neighborhood yeah well so go back to the traffic stop though so you had the one car she pulled you over <laughs> and she was alone right yeah and but there was no other police officer until the supervisor showed up yeah no there uh, so throughout the traffic stop it was the original cop and then one came from uh, the hilltop direction, and then an another car came from behind me, and then finally the supervisor. Right. Showed so up. that one I kind of get. So I know that part standard yeah. is that whenever if I get pulled over, half the time like another police officer will show up behind me. But and then you call the supervisor. I don't know if they yeah. just happen to be out. And they're yeah, just no, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Just I, swing yeah by. I, I called and I actually appreciated that he showed up because I wanted to know what was what was wrong or why we were there so long. Plus, you're a pretty sharp guy. We all know you. Uh, at least we know you from online. So yeah. we know you're pretty level headed. We know that you know you're looking at the situation and you're able to deconstruct it as it's happening. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're a smart guy. You know, so calling Nevin was smart. Yeah. Uh, no, I just didn't want. I mean, I didn't think any because when I think of Annapolis, I don't think of Annapolis as a town. Although it does happen quietly, I just don't think that they would blatantly perform any acts of police brutality like that. So I wasn't scared of them maybe... Pulling you out of the car and kicking, yeah. you, kicking you around or I something. I wasn't scared of that just because I don't think uh, the police department has got that bad yet. But I just was nervous because I didn't know what else they would do. I mean, I'm thinking, what, what could be going on? Like, You know, it's funny that you say that. I never thought about that that way. Is If you look at, I've not seen many accusations of police brutality or them overstepping their bounds, except for one person on Reddit who's actually a white guy, and he's very vocal about that incident, and right. you, the, it may or may not unfolded. I just I think that the police brutality here is not, is not so much physical, but mentally. It's just... Which, which would be harassment. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, Harry. It's, it's that I'm the superior, you listen to me, and if you don't, then you'll get arrested, or I'll do whatever is it with is within my power at that time to make sure that you know that I'm superior. So, and I guess what we're, we're, we're talking about without really saying it, so let's just say, it, is there a racial aspect to that? Yeah, absolutely. And so we go back to, I always call it the Ward 1 test, that if something happens in some other part of the city, if it happened in Ward 1, would it be tolerated? And I guess that would also be racial. You know, most people who live in Ward 1 are white, yeah. and other areas have, you know, Latinos and blacks uh, in a proportion that's not commiserate with Ward 1. So I always give the example, I've talked about it a few times, a few years ago in Eastport Terrace or Harbor House, whichever it was, where the black youths were pulled out and their pictures were taken by the police because of some incidents, and they didn't know who it was specifically. They just yeah. knew it was black youths, and so they were pulling kids out and taking their picture, and the argument was they're in a public place, they don't have an expectation of privacy, mm -hmm. so what the police did 
wasn't illegal. And I, and my opinion with that was it was murky at best because I don't know if it was simply they were taking their pictures so much as they were pulling them aside. And those were police interviews at that yeah. point. And the criteria for me, what to separate that was whether it was a racial or at least an issue of class was if this had happened at St. Mary's, if there was, they're pulling St. Mary's students yeah. off the playground and taking their pictures, Absolutely. the city would have gone apoplectic. So if there was a white guy who got pulled over the other night and he took him too long for the police to, to process him, he yeah. wouldn't be sitting here yeah. because that wouldn't be a story because we would assume, no, he was a white guy and you know the, their system was probably down. Yeah. But you and all the other African-American residents of the town, I think I have to wonder at some point, is there... Uh, a racial element to anything that happens because some maybe sometimes yes and yeah. and probably most of the time no but i can say that as a middle class white guy just sitting here having never gotten a ticket for yeah. the last 15 years and i think that i, I want to be careful with that right because i don't want to be the black guy that screams race but it just it, it was it was a sketchy situation to mm-hmm. me and nothing added up to me and it it seemed like they just wanted more like they wanted to find something which they weren't going to find, but I just didn't understand because, as you said, I just don't think it would have happened to anyone else. Do you read the Capitol? The, yeah. Do you read the comments? This is, I hate... Uh, the Capitol comments, I hate reading any newspaper. I, I hate it, but I cannot not read them. I have yeah. to. It's a train wreck. You can't look away. I can't. <laughs> uh, and I get so fired up because I hate those people. Yeah. I just do. I seen one yesterday. That's the one I want to talk about. about was it the letter to the editor about the, the police where they said, hey, we can still respect the police yet call out bad behavior within police ranks? Did, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And so it was Marilyn Veritas. He's one regular. He's a horrible person. I hate him. But he is that apologist for where, where he's saying basically he had all the statistics and he yeah. said, here are the statistics of black on black crime. And this is the statistic, statistics of uh, blacks who commit crime. Mm-hmm. So he, he lists all the stuff that he found on Wikipedia or wherever he went to. And at the end of it, he goes, Do, can you really blame the police for yeah. if they if they occasionally shoot the occasional yeah. black guy? You know, sort of like, eh, it's a gimme. You know, go ahead. And I deleted my account and I locked myself out on purpose because I would get always pulled into that morass. Yeah. And I would so, but I want to reply because I'm not liberal and I'm not conservative. But to me, that's like saying, and this is, I wish I could, I knew this was his sensitive spot. So I'd yeah. love to say it's going, that's like saying, I'm not going to take my kid to a Catholic church because there is a higher incidence of molestation among the, the clergy. And I don't know if it's higher, but, or if it's in proportion with other religions. But, but my, my point would be, you cannot stereotype and you can't say, you know, all right, we're going to take constitutional rights away because yeah. they, they just cause a disproportionate amount of the crime. Yeah. But at the same time, a cop goes, would say, hey, look, realistically, hey, I'm driving around. I see five black kids driving around in a car at 1130 at night coming out of the PJs. I'm going to pay attention because you'd want me to pay attention. You know, so they don't have an eloquent argument like that in the comments because they're hateful, shitty people. But but it was interesting kind of watching that all unfold. But I think two things. One, the black on black crime argument is ridiculous. I agree. Yeah. I mean, if you kill who you live with. Crime happens with who you live with. I know. And I said, if anything yeah. ever happens to me, I want you to look at my wife. I want an autopsy. <laughs> you look ar- I mean, if I live around, if I live in a white community, I'm more likely to be killed by a white person. If I live in a black community, I'm more likely to be killed by a yeah, black person. Yeah, I'm a person. lazy guy. If I'm going to kill someone, I don't want a car involved. Yeah. I don't, you know, my gun's right there. My yeah. neighbor's ticking me off. You know, that's... Yeah. So I just thought I, 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 that argument always kills me. But the capital arguments are a mess. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I think that... Here's something, for example. So there was an officer um, that I was downtown in the uh, Bloomberry Square area uh, with some of my friends. No, not Bloomberry Square. I'm Oberry Court. I'm sorry. Oberry Court area with some of my friends. It was a birthday party. That's off of Clay Street. Yeah, off of Clay Street. We were having fun. So an officer comes over. This is this is at the time during while I was campaigning. So an officer comes over. Um, and he says, you guys have to leave. This can't happen. And I'm like, what is going like? What's going on? Like, why? We're, nothing was going on. We Witcher were all stand- rousing. Yeah, we're all standing in front of the uh, the owner, like the owner's home, and they say, "Well, you guys have to leave. This can't happen." We're getting reports in that there's too much noise, so we all go in, but we eventually come back out. So then he comes back and he's like, "All right, I'm going to start arresting people because I-, I don't like this gathering." Not mind you, nothing is taking place. No loud noise. No fights. No anything. So I ask him, you know, like, why are we being dispersed? Like I do this in other neighborhoods and there's never a problem. You don't ask me to leave. So why are we being dispersed? And he says, so now you're challenging my authority. You're challenging my authority. And he literally 
told me that I was going to be arrested if he if I was not gone by the time he came back. I stayed there and he had a long, long talk with me, but I thought it was unnecessary because he thought that I was challenging his power by asking a question. He wanted to prove a point, so he walked me all the way to the police car just to prove a point. Well, there's no law against challenging an officer's authority. Yeah. There's there's a law against resisting arrest, but that hadn't gotten to that point. Yeah. Kind well, of there's ridiculous. the Ward 1 test. Like, let's and say then, this is outside Joe Budge's house, yeah. and they were all just chatting. Then, go, all then, right, guys, let's break this up. But <laughs> and then the, the crazy thing is, so I, I reported it to the police department because I just thought it was sketchy. And I get on the Annapolis Police Department's website some months later. And this guy's like the uh, cop of the month. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, here we go. This is ridiculous. Well, and I never even heard back from that report after so, I reported that So the, the homeowner never complained about you? No. That, you, that you're aware of? We, we were at her house. Right. So um, she couldn't have called the cops because it was her kid's birthday party. <laughs> right. I just think, Loiter, loitering. Hang, I just think hanging fishy outside things happen. Some, well, I, mean, I mean, cops are, are trained to fish. Yeah. The DUI checkpoints that they set up, I mean, very... Few drivers are caught through the DUI checkpoints. They're the ones that are turning off before the DUI checkpoints. Mm-hmm. They typically have a cop stationed on a side road in advance of a DUI checkpoint looking for the cars that turn off there. Hey, yeah. off subject a little bit because I just thought this was funny. I was talking to someone the other day who used to work in the customs department, and he said that the best stuff you could find was in the trash cans right before customs at the airport because people lose their mer- nerve at the last minute mm-hmm. and they're dumping stuff like back like Cuban yeah. cigars. He goes, he goes, we used to have tons of Cuban cigars because people would lose their nerve. Before <laughs> Liquor, they get weed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, getting off subject. But. So okay, think- note note to self: if this podcast doesn't work out, get a job as a janitor at the airport. <laughs> So most of the people who are going to reply on the Capitol uh, comments, I don't know why. Most are conservative in general. I don't yeah. know why most people who respond Is to the Is it a conservative outlet? Comments, I it might be, myself, right. yeah. So, uh, and again, I'm not liberal, but I, they just annoy me because they're so far to the right. But their argument, if you, if you boil it down and you can extract some of it you, you, and you pick it apart and you say, okay – What's the crux of their argument? And their argument is, is saying political correctness is going to inhibit the police officers to do their jobs. And, and you as going to someone saying, I don't break the law. You know, I'm a student. I'm going to class. I'm doing yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm an upstanding citizen. I'm tired of getting pulled over. Mm-hmm. And I'm tired of what I perceive as harassment. And the other people say you're injecting race into everything. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I would argue that you don't have a luxury. You never know. That's, yeah. I have a friend of mine. Uh, she was a stepmother. And she was having problems with her kids. And she would always say, uh, you know, it's because I'm a stepmother they're doing this or they're doing that. And I said, you know what? What you described to me is what my kids do, too. But I never question it because they're my kids. You as a stepmother always have to say, is it normal or is it because I'm their stepmother? I think the same thing with you with with race is that you never know. Whatever happens to me, it could could just be a bad day for the cop. It could be their system down. For you, you always have to say, is it because I'm black? Is it is it a problem? You know, absolutely. Are you right sometimes? Probably. Are you wrong sometimes? Probably. Yeah. You know, and some would argue, go look, it was a black police officer who pulled you over, so it can't be ra- racial yeah. because you're black, they're black. And yeah. you would say, well, then it's an authority thing, or you know, can you be discriminated against by black police officers? Yeah, I mean, blacks can be racist too. I mean, yeah. uh, it's not, you know, it, I, I would say racism does not really know have any <laughs> racial bounds. I mean, it really doesn't. Yeah. I mean, well, then, but they would point out and say, well, that's the police officer. Yeah, they're discriminating because, in their experience, in the black experience, they would say that you know most of the contact they have with the criminal element would be black in this town. I don't know if that's true. You know, that's a, or Hispanic. You know, and it goes back to where you had that Facebook post last week, which I thought was a great discussion from everyone, where you had the police officers out there and you yeah. say it's an occupation at this point. Mm-hmm. And my point when I wrote back saying, well, let's let's break this down is that if it's my neighborhood and I see a cop sitting outside, I, I sleep better. You know, mm-hmm. America, we pay the sheriff, uh, we pay an off-duty sheriff to patrol our area because, you know, we want to be safe. Yeah. And, but that's our choice. Whereas I'd say, you know. And that's no different and than I said the, the cops, hacker properties that hired yeah. private security. Right. But then, but then I say, you know, the cops can't win for losing is that hacker residents will say, we want more of a police presence. But when they're there, it's an occupied state. And I still kind of stand by that, I guess. Yeah. You know, but, but I have that luxury where the cop we hire Mm-hmm. Is not when I'm leaving my house or when I'm driving. He's not pulling me over. He's yeah. not. And where you'd say, you know, uh, are they protecting the hacker residents or are they there to make sure they don't get out of line? So again, yeah. that's that perception. Yeah. I have the luxury uh, of 
I don't have to question the the officer in our neighborhood. Well, whereas you, Tim, let me do. let me talk about. Okay, you talk about your the private security. I mean, a is he charged with traffic violations? I mean, if you blew a stop sign, would he pull you over? Yeah, he could. He could. Yeah, even though he's off duty, he he still has all police powers. Okay, okay, and he um, has. Okay, not me, but I mean that's yeah. right. But but again, but again, he knows it. But again, he pulled over a resident once, and the residents all went apoplectic because like, wait a minute, we're paying to for him mm. to you know yeah technically they're breaking the law, but they were like, oh wait a minute, you know we're paying him to be. Your, I mean, your, I mean, my question uh, was, I guess you a private security. Security versus public police is, yeah. is, is there's a there's a difference there. I think. Well, now we're, we're splitting here because he our security even is if he's cop. private is a cop. Okay. You know, so but and you know so he has all those powers. But I, in the discussion that we had and people and most of the people who are, you know friends with you on Facebook, yeah. so that's the nice thing is it never got nasty. Yeah, never, yeah. And you throw out things every once in a while that I think you that people do get nasty with you mm-hmm. on the Eastport forum and you handle it really well to be honest with you. But it's interesting watching that. Uh, discussion go uh, the, the way it progresses because you know people are thinking about this stuff. Yeah, uh, a friend of ours, you know, because I, I, it was a private message that she didn't post, so I'm not going to mention her, but we all know her. And she said something. She lives in the area, mm-hmm. and she said that Domino's wouldn't deliver to any of the streets around yeah. public housing in Eastport, let alone in public housing. Yeah, they they absolutely will not. And it pisses me off because I love Domino's. So I and so <laughs> oh, we, whoa 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 you love Domino's? Okay, this, Domino's, uh, right, this now, podcast is done. We're done. <laughs> That, Thanks for coming in, Doan. that crust. This that crust. That that uh, garlic crust. I yeah. love. <laughs> so what was interesting is she and I were and John was on there too. Although I don't know if you were responding, but it was a great discussion because I said, you know, I see both sides to it, mm-hmm. and I think it's wrong. Let me just put it out there, you know, on paper. But then if I'm a Domino's owner and mm-hmm. and all of a sudden my my delivery people are getting jumped when they're going in and they're getting robbed. And I said, I haven't heard of any of that. I've heard of cabbies, but not, yeah. not Domino's. I think um, last year when we had the like string of murders, there were two pizza delivery robberies. Yeah. So And after that, they just like... I know at Obery Court there was last that Denise Robinson's uh, oh, yeah. boyfriend had gotten jumped over there. And they actually caught the guys. There were like five guys that jumped them. So I sent her an article from the Post, because I remember this happened back in 95 or 96, and in in uh, Anacostia, where all the pizza delivery places stopped delivering. They, they were forcing residents to come to the doors mm. or come, come down to the street to yeah. collect the pizzas and people flipped out and there was a great debate at the, this was before the internet so you didn't have the, the, those hellish commenters yeah. but there was a big debate about that yeah. where you had people going yeah it is wrong but we kind of see it yeah. and her thing was like you, now you're not even just talking about the residents you're talking about or who, of public housing you're talking about everybody in the area so you're saying we're not delivering to this area of yeah. Eastport and it was a great it was a good debate we had offline because I went both ways every time that I'm yeah. like I don't you know, know where I end up on that it's it's I think it's a way around it, it. sucks for the residents like you yeah. and the majority of the residents are like you who are law abiding citizens yeah. you know, they have jobs they have you know and most people don't see that you know yeah. just, just like everybody else it, looking to get ahead in life it, right? I just think what what upset me about it was because last year it, it seems only to happen when they know a big event is going to happen like the holidays 4th of July whenever there's a parade downtown or anything, increase police presence. And I think, I don't know, that to me is just, is, is wrong. Because they don't do it in, for when we have the Eastport Working Together meetings, a question is always put up at the so end of the meeting. Explain those because people don't know okay, what that Yeah, is. so the Eastport Working Together meetings are once a month we meet with uh, the mayor, members of city council, uh, the police chief and his staff, and they come to the Eastport uh, Community Center. And we try to create uh, solutions for some of the things that are happening in our community and around our community. And how do those go? I mean, are they productive? Are they a bitch session? Are they um, a little both? I'm going to be completely honest with yeah. you. Uh, so. I like the idea of them, but I don't think they are effective because we show up, we talk about what's wrong, and then we just like, oh, pat ourselves on the back and we leave. And that's not, to me, that I, I just don't like it. How many residents show up for that? Uh, maybe like 15. All right. Yeah, and then the rest for, come from Ward 8 and outside, uh, outside of public housing residents, which I appreciate a lot mm-hmm. because that conversation is needed. But I think... And I will say this too, not to interrupt you because yeah. I interrupt you. But the residents I see online, they especially in Ward Eight, mm-hmm. they genuinely see the residents of public housing as part of their community. Yeah, and they're yeah, trying absolutely. hard. Yeah, I do see them as trying to be inclusive of everybody, mm-hmm. and not seeing them as just people that are that this is a problem we have to deal with. Yeah, I, I think they try hard to make sure that they're not just residents of public housing; they're residents of Ward Eight. Yeah, and I will give them credit. I, for I that. appreciate. That. I would be that curious to see and if a demographic on where the residents of Ward Eight that are on Facebook that are vocal live. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet vocal as oh just on Facebook. I'd be I'd be I'd be willing to bet that the lower quarter of the peninsula probably has like a three percent Facebook. I was down by like one point and all. Yeah, Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so back to the meetings. Yeah, so, no, I appreciate the meetings for the fact that they bring people together, that we're able to talk. I won't, made it, it made it my my goal at the towards the end of last year to just be more solution based if you present a problem present a solution right and i just don't think we're doing that right now maybe it's because it's the first couple of meetings you know we're just working out the kinks but we could work on a little more but um yeah the meetings they've helped out and i, I just i don't know that that presence that the police on on holidays i just think it increases activity like you see a, you see the cops and you're just like same old thing here they go again not trusting us not wanting to build relationships but instead sitting right out front of my door when it, i'm like you just wanting to celebrate the new year do you have positive positive interactions with police i've had some yeah mm-hmm. i actually was going to apply to i mean be, i'm not looking for the good like yeah, yeah, no, no. for good no I'm no i actually was um going to i'm a criminal justice major so i've interacted with uh, law enforcement a lot and I for, mo- for the most part I've enjoyed those interactions uh I was actually applying to be a cadet down here at the police station but then I took a different job in legislation um and let me let me I'll, I'll end my turn to interrupt here again now oh, Dewan is not I'll throw a stereotype not this Typical, you know, thug walking around with his <laughs> pants down around his ankles and everything else. Okay. You have a very Donald this, Glover's go thing going on. Right? <laughs> uh, this is a going into his junior year at Bowie State, yeah. getting a higher education. He works for the Maryland State Legislature part time. Is it is that an intern or is that paid or? Is yeah. That so a, I just uh, literally yesterday was my first day working for uh, Catherine Pugh's office now. Oh. Okay. Her legislative um, office. Very politically involved, ran for alderman in Ward 6, uh, unsuccessfully, but uh, that's, you know. But wowed a lot of people in the process. You you really did. And this is a guy that also saw some neighbors struggling in the summer, in the heat of the summer, with no air conditioning. That was a cool thing, by the way, dude. Thank you. you. That was amazing. Thanks. thanks. And rather than rather than wait around for somebody to get some paperwork and sign some work orders and stuff like that. He raised 15,000, I was going to say 11,000, yeah, yeah, $12,000. Yeah. Got a bunch of guys with pickup trucks, went to Home Depot and bought a bunch of freaking air conditioners yeah. and put them in. So, you, oh, actually we did like 50 houses in Eastport Terrace. We did maybe 10 in Newtown 20 and a couple in Robin. Cause it was like, it was like 500 degrees at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it, it was, was burning hot. <laughs> there were, there were, you know, at least 60 air conditioners that yeah. were installed and this took about it a week. Yeah. It literally <laughs> wrapped up in a weekend. The big day was that Saturday. We did the most homes. I think we did 30 homes that day and uh Sunday we finished up, but yeah, it took the rest of the week, everything we got them installed and people were happy. You know what's funny about that is that you posted that on the Eastport forum because mm-hmm. you're pretty active there and there were still not many and they kind of faded away pretty quickly. There were yeah. still people kind of shitting on the project. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You try and do something good yeah. and you still have those people. It's well, what not if, just you. What if they're going like, to sell them for drugs? Or? Like just look, dude, it, <laughs> it, it, at the time lead was melting. Yeah. And, you know, these people are living without working air conditioning. Just yeah. be human. You yeah. Know? And I, whatever your political bent is, just be a human being for a while. Absolutely. 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 That's how I feel a lot about certain social, certain posts that poke at like social issues. Yeah. Let's talk. Want to talk about your uh, criminal background? <laughs> the one charge I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running a stop dro- sign. That's about it. It's, uh, <laughs> oh no, no there, I thought you were talking one. about. Uh, I thought you were talking about with. Uh, oh, there is not. The no. guy posted in the forum when I was running for office, and he went on um, Maryland court search and found out that I got pulled over when I was um, going to the Eastern Shore. Oh, I didn't see. For. It. Um, my uh at the time like my registration was suspended or something. right right yeah. <laughs> you <Yeah>. bastard <laughs> yeah, but yeah i, didn't I mean, even I mean the, know it was cousin insurance but yeah i mean i mean, I mean the point is that <laughs> that dewan is working for the community and it doesn't matter whether it's a you know a black community a white community his community or the greater community you know and and, and you're asking the questions which i think is very admirable i think i don't think that annapolis police are out of control as you say i don't think you know could they be perhaps i don't know i think we're fortunate that we don't have that here. I don't yeah. think we have that in Anne Arundel County. Certainly there's biases and there's racism that does creep in and that needs to get taken care of. And, and you're starting the conversation and getting the ball rolling, which I think is very admirable. Well, I think also that social media, this is where I like, I mean, I'm, I'm getting really embittered towards social media in general because it's just turning in, it's really twisting society. It had such potential and it's just going to crap. But it was interesting. Uh, a guy I love, Dan Carlin, he's got a great podcast and he was talking about what happened with the LA riots. Before you were born and that was something i was in college yeah. and for me that was that was amazing to me that was the first that cnn was young at the time and it was just amazing to me to see a city on fire he, he was working in uh klat whatever it was and, and he was a reporter in la and what he said was that you get these black mothers who would come in with pictures of their sons beaten up and said 
this is what the cops are doing to our kids in L.A. Because L.A. at the time was the, the, the police situation was really bad. Yeah. So they'd say, this is our kids. This is what's happening. And the, and the reporters would say, look, we don't know if the cops did this. We yeah. don't know. if they, Look, you have an interesting, compelling story, but there's nothing we can go with. So when oh, Rodney, Rodney King yeah. was beaten on, on film, what the rage was, was, look, now you're seeing what we've been telling you for mm-hmm. years. Now yeah. you see it for your own, in your own eyes and still to find the jury to find the police not guilty. That's why it just sparked yeah. the, the rage was because <laughs> I think it was that frustration saying we've been telling you this all the whole time and you're telling us that we're, we're playing the race card, that we're injecting race into something that doesn't exist. But you see for your own eyes, it does exist. Yeah. yeah. I think what social media is kind of doing is that you're seeing this kind of, that at least these these discussions that you're put at least we're discussing it because people say let's have an honest discussion about blank and there's never an honest discussion because you come to whatever discussion is with your biases and it's just people yelling each other i will say to your credit and to the people in the esport forum at least that in that microcosm it may get slightly heated yeah but we are having a discussion about it yeah absolutely that's that's discussion that i appreciate i I love the forum i love facebook because well things that we (laughs) things that we would normally never talk about we talk about we get engaged with one another we meet people there's so many people that over the course of this year that i've met on facebook talking yeah. about anything and they're just like all right cool well let's just go grab coffee and we sit downtown at 49 west for like two hours and just talk about anything yeah yours and nevin's relationship really cracked me up because yeah. you're two guys who ran for office and yeah. now you're you're you gotten really tight and i kind of yeah. like to see that but uh I, this is why and john and i disagree about this i hate the anonymity of the comments on the capitol site and all the other sites i think it's if you had to register with facebook or whatever because i first of all it's not a first amendment issue because it's a private organization you know so they can have it but i hate that there's nothing good comes out of those discussions. Yeah. Nothing. Well, but out of discussions on the esport forum, mm-hmm. when you can see people's identities and see who they are, I think even though it gets heated, it's still an honest discussion. And yeah. You're still respectful because not only do you see him on Facebook, but you kind of are going to bump into him in real life. There's a good yeah. chance because we're such a small town. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And you put a face with a name, too. Exactly. That's well, And I think so that, you I, know. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I, I do believe that there is, I mean, you may have an opinion mm-hmm. uh, that's very valid, but for whatever reason, you may not want everyone to know that it's you. Yeah. And you can make the argument that that's okay. But people don't do that. No, I know. But again, I, I think that... Has Marilyn Veritas on the Capitol site, that's a, has he ever said one thing that made you pause and go, you know what? He has a good point. He's he's an absolute, just a shitty human being. And But he Which may be fine. like, there, there he may be a nice guy in real life. I'll bet you if you met him in real, real life, yeah. you, he'd be a great guy. He's probably a great dad. And but that anonymity allows you, if you have a dark side, to say, I'm just going to be an evil ass online and I'm just going to needle people just because I it can and call, them, <laughs> and call them libtards and, you know, just... I, I, it's... I see nothing positive coming out of that. And the newspapers would say, well, we're not looking to be, you know, an Algonquin roundtable for discussions. And they're not, you know. And even if you had a larger Facebook page where if someone's living in Sioux City or someone's living in Seattle, you're probably not going to get that. But here in a small experiment of Annapolis yeah. and you have that discussion group, you're kind of forced to be civil and, mm-hmm. and think about it, you know. And because, you know, I even if I disagree with you, I've got to pause and say, all right. He's coming in from a different perspective that I don't understand. I've never lived in public housing. I've never gotten pulled over and had to worry about it if, you know, if it was a racial issue. But it forces me, you know, when I talk to you, where I say, you know, I think, you know, there he goes injecting the race card. But I'm sitting here across the table looking yeah. at you going, look, maybe I ought to think about this more because he's a smart guy. He, he's got integrity. He's an honest guy. And so maybe there's something to what he's, he's saying. Yeah. If, but if, so if it's someone I don't know, I don't have to think that. Yeah, But again, absolutely. you look at, okay, you talk about the text messages that you and I were privy to about the whole Domino's delivering in public housing there. Which was three white people discussing. Um, you know, why would that person not just throw that out on Facebook for whatever reason? Oh, normally she does. I, I'm just I'm just saying, there, but it's a very valid opinion. I mean, just take that one step further and just say, I mean, you know, could that opinion be thrown out and start a conversation and start a discussion on Facebook anonymously, but not necessarily wanting to know who was that threw that bomb? But I think that's tip to you, Ellen Moyer. I think things like that create create great conversation. From that, we could have had Domino's Pizza delivery now. <laughs> well, I think I think Does Papa John's deliver there. No pizza delivers there except for like today's pizza and how is that pizza? Uh, today's pizza, I only like the subs. Uh, you never had that <laughs> wings. Yeah. Oh, the the wings are yeah, the wings are good too. But um, yeah, it's like today's and pizza bowlers are the only two places that deliver there, and they deliver until two a.m. You know what's interesting to me? So I, someone in my neighborhood has a truck, and you've probably seen it. It's or it's, a, it's an old school bus. It's a gray school bus, and it's the loaded. goodie bus. What is it? The goodie bus. 
That's probably what it is because yeah. it's filled with good. They live, they live a couple blocks from me. I know his mother in law pretty well, and she's great. But so it's a it's a it's a old school bus, John and John. Yeah. I'm looking at you now. But it's a uh, painted gray, and on the inside, it's filled with candy and yeah. sodas and yeah. sundries and I guess anything else because. People don't think about this. If you live in public housing, transportation's a problem. So just something as simple as running to the store is very difficult. So yeah. I'm assuming what he did, because I see him going out every morning and coming back every night. Yeah. I'm assuming what he's doing is he's he's like setting up a temporary store in yeah, public the, housing. The Goody Bus has been there. The Goody Bus. When I was, I moved here nine years ago and the Goody Bus has been here since then. I'm, I'm sure it's been here before. But yeah, I love it. It's like a, it's like a, they just took the old school bus and they have literally everything you can think of on there. T-shirts, food, like <laughs> yeah, literally, literally a Seven Eleven on wheels. They have everything there, and it's all at a very cheap price, and it helps the residents out. So that's see, that's just what we're talking about. Is that there's so many elements? Like they say, there's two Annapolises, but with Latinos, you guys say there's three Annapolises. Yeah. But that part of of Annapolis life is so invisible to mm-hmm. to people who live in yeah, when Ward I see, One or when in, I see like not picking on Ward One. Well, I am when but. we when we like. When when I see pictures of like like Annapolis, wherever I'm at, people whenever I say I'm from Annapolis, they're like, oh my gosh, really Annapolis? They put it on this pedestal. And when I see pictures of Annapolis, it's always of the sailboats and right. the downtown. But I just feel like there's so much more to our city. There's so much more character. There's so many more people that we just abandoned because it's like, okay, I agree. Downtown is our city, and this is what we're gonna represent. But I think that if we expand into those other parts of town. Like, I just think there's so much room for improvement. But I always said that. Yeah. I, I knew some guys from public housing. I talked to a couple of them. Mm-hmm. They had never been past parole in their lives, and they were 60. And yeah. that just, that blew me away that, yeah. that you had these there, guys. There are some kids in public housing that, and that if, I know the police do a program where they take them out fishing, take, yeah. you know, residents out fishing, mm-hmm. that they live in Harbor House. They live in Eastport Terrace, which you can, you know, if you're a good spitter, you can spit into one of the creeks from there, have never seen the water. I think... I mean, that's a, a issue. Me and my friends, uh, during the summer, we have nowhere. If we want to enjoy the bay or want to enjoy natural waters, we have nowhere to go. I mean, you can go to Sandy Point, but that's all the way out near the Bay Bridge, and it's I think it's like 10 bucks a car. But, like, if we wanted to go, for instance, if we go to, uh, is it the uh, neighborhood past Hillsmere? Um, I mean, past the Key School. Is that Hillsmere? Hillsmere. Yeah, Hill. yeah, Hillsmere. Yeah, the cops get called. Yeah, you get the cops called on you. If you go to a rundle on the bay, the cops get called on you. It's like where can we, like where can we enjoy? This is like an environmental justice problem. Well, that's, a, that's that's people that's, don't have access to what we pride our city on. It's like that, that's ridiculous. an issue. We don't have any real true recreational access yeah. in the in the city. The trucks. Free. Well, I, I, to, to the bay, to the bay and water. Well, you can I mean, yeah, you got a public boat ramp. We there. went uh, t- two years ago. Um, we went to the uh, Truxton boat, uh, like where they dropped the boats at. Right. And uh, for the Blue Angels, me and my friends were out there. We wanted a place to enjoy the, it was like 98 degrees. We wanted to get in the water. You can't swim in that because it's like we're climbing out of the pole and you can feel you losing oh, the, the uh, oil and the. Like the, uh, no, no, it's a, some, there's like weird electric work down there. You can't swim in that anymore because it's like once you get out to get on, grab the metal pole, you can feel like, like you're losing tingle? the numbness in your arm. Get out of yeah. here. Seriously, right on the boat drop, like where they sit, like the police boat at and all sure. that stuff. Yeah. I'm like, well, there goes the one place we yeah. can swim. <laughs> so, well, that, I mean, that's a county issue with with the water access. I know yeah. Steve Shoe's looking to to do that. I mean, you know, you've got the Mayo Beach Park, which is only open like a couple weekends a year. But I mean, yeah, but from a practical side, you know, from pub, kids from public housing aren't going to Mayo Beach. No, no. I, again, that's I'm just saying that's not an issue that's isolated to Annapolis. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that as as we wrap up here, Dewan. In a perfect world, how do you want to have the police monitor public housing? How would you like to see the police monitor public housing or to protect them? Uh, I jokingly, I, I don't think I said it on Facebook when you were talking about the, the police state uh, or the occupation. I'm like, I was robbed twice a couple years ago and I was like, hell, oh, if bike, he wants to park Jesus. in my driveway <laughs> and drink my beer, I'm all for it. <laughs> you know, that's that's fine. Yeah. And I but what if he was parked there and every time you went outside, he was going, hey, dude, let's see your ID. Let's see. That, your, yeah, again, that, that, that's a different story. I'm not saying it's happening, but I'm saying that's that's the perception. I mean, what, what, yeah. what, who, who, who did this? Oh, Scott McMullen does this in his podcast all the time. If you were mayor for the day, or if, if, if <laughs> yeah. you could, if you could move your magic wand or whatever, how would you address the police presence, the need in public housing? I hate using this word because it's just been dead for the last year but community policing yeah. i mean and what is that what, what, what but does that community define policing that? has to be it can't be you can't community we you have to take away the harassment you have to take away the 
the botched attempts at police brutality, even though it's very, very small, you have to take away, or, take away that. You just have to be, you have to be authentic. You have to know your neighbor. You have to understand what's going on in public housing. You have to uh, understand the the residents that live within public housing, not just public housing, but that live on the outskirts of public housing, uh, that live across the street from us. You, you just got to be there. And I don't think sitting in our in a car at the top of my street for two hours is doing anything. I mean, I'm not asking you now to get out of the car and walk because it's six degrees, but on a nice day when it's summertime, get out, walk, interact, and, you know, just get to know the community that you're policing. And do you, do you want to see Do you want to see a cop cruising your neighborhood just walking through the pass and hey dewan how you doing moving right on and you yeah. know hey frank or joe or whatever i love it that is. because then i trust you i trust that you have my my best interest and i'll have your best interest mm-hmm. if something happens but na- it's not like that now um but I, yeah i just like to see you know better police uh or better community policing um i'd like to see them in, in involved more in you know the the shaping of public housing and because I I think that they understand that a lot of what goes on in public housing is in in, in terms of crime is just because of the living conditions and the conditions of the city and how people are just down on luck and they have to do what they have to do to live. I think they understand that. Well, if you, and that's what I always say too, people to, uh, turn into a racial issue, mm-hmm. but from a very practical side, if you were at a trailer park in West Virginia or something, you would have similar amounts of crime. You'd mm-hmm. have uh, similar sides, uh, similar uh, incidences of teen pregnancy. Yeah. It, that is not a race issue. That is definitely a, it's a poverty. socioeconomic yeah, It's a poverty issue. thing. Poverty breeds crime. And like you said, I mean, if we were in Alabama or West Virginia, the same thing be happening. It'd just be... And it does. Yeah. Yeah. I went to, When I was in school in Pittsburgh, like 45 minutes from us was like, you know, the rural west yeah, side there. of Pennsylvania, yeah. Yeah, Pennsylvania. And they had the same crime that I'd have here. And I'm right. just... It's like, it just, it just was the living conditions. It was the poverty. So I think that the, there are just... I think there are a ton of solutions. We just have to get real about fixing those solutions. And... I think we're moving slow now, but hopefully we can we can create. I think it'll be fixed. I honestly do. Are you gonna run again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, you don't do what everyone else does. Going, well, I'm gonna have to explore the get your <laughs> yeah yeah. Go yeah. For what? You got a, you got an office in mind? Um. <laughs> well, I'll be 21 in February, so I'll be done a lot of shit for. A... <laughs> yeah, I'll be old enough to run for a state seat if I like. But I mean, look, I I wanted to leave Annapolis. Uh, once I lost, I wanted to leave at Annapolis and run. I had two chances to run near my school, in the town near my school. There's a vacant city council seat, and they really, really want, wanted someone from the school to run. And I was going to run, but I just, I fell in love with Annapolis. And it's like, I can't yeah, leave so, it. Yeah. yeah. It's so, Annapolis is a trap. It you love it so much. You just my wife and I, we thought we'd be here for two years and move on because yeah. we loved moving, and we've been here for 20. We're not going yeah. anywhere. I just can't leave. So I, I want to stay here, and I want to get involved again. I mean, of course I'd love to win the Ward 6 seat because it's just my community. It's my home. But I'm not cutting out any other offices in Annapolis. What do you think? Something, Tim's floated this idea out a bunch of times. I mean, it, it certainly would take a, I don't know, an earthquake to move or whatever. But uh, what about a floating public housing seat on the council? I said that and everyone, including the hacker board, said that's divisive and everything. I said, but DC had an at, had two at-large uh, aldermen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marion Barry was one of them. But you have the eight wards and some of those wards contain public housing. And the, the argument, including the hacker board said, and they shot me down quick when we interviewed them. Well, you them. just said that too, I, I know, that the police need to know the needs of the community. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that if, if someone was an alderman for public housing and for Section 8 housing, which you know would essentially be an at-large position, they know the very specific problems and incidences and, and challenges that are faced by very specific public housing because they're not all the same either. And I said, what if you had someone and it was shot down as, no, it's not inclusive, it's not divisive. I'm like, I don't know. I, I still think it would be odd and I know, but I, and maybe it's stupid, but I, I just think. No, but I think that'd be helpful because getting back to what you I said. I want one for the business community what, too. But what, yeah. what you said earlier in, in, in the interview is that legislation and our focus is never on public housing or well, it's, it's, underserved communities. I f- yeah, I, when was the last time they were talking about hanging Christmas lights on Medgar Evers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, when, when, light a Christmas tree at the end of Frederick Douglass, all that land. Deuce, I, don't, I, I don't know. I just get – I feel like I, – I think that's a great idea because then you can't You're have – You're the first. <laughs> yeah, you, but, but then you can't have the argument of, oh, that's not – 
our property. We don't want anything to do with that. That's federal. It was always an afterthought. I've never seen, you know, does anyone feel comfortable talking to, does anyone from public housing feel comfortable or even know who their older person is? Nothing against the older person. I persons, feel like but... now people do because the race that we had was. Well, this was an odd one. Yeah, the race that we had was. It was contested. It was yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, it was fun. And yeah. we got, we each got our names out there. So I think now people do. So I, I just like to see, I measure the growth of public housing. I measure the growth of, you know, everything that has to do with that based on at the end of each year, how do the residents feel? Do they feel left out still? Do they f- feel that it was only an election time thing? That's how we'll measure it. Well, I, I, and a lot of residents I know from the white neighborhoods, even they're only vaguely aware of the election because we're a commuter town. They're mm-hmm. vaguely a- aware of the election and they may not even know what ward they're in, you yeah. know, but if you live in public housing, I think that the city council and mayor have more impact on your life than they would on people who are commuting to yeah. D.C. and Baltimore every day. Yeah, absolutely. Not to say they don't have some, but you look at public housing and it's never, it's always been a problem to deal with or so, at least just, just solve it. It's sort of like, yeah. or, or just, just solve it enough that we don't have to deal with it. I've never seen public but housing being have, addressed. But we haven't put that focus on it. I feel like if we really get, if we get serious, if we roll up our sleeves, if we put focus on it from a city perspective, with all you know, we don't have we don't have that much wiggle room because it is run by the federal government. But the little wiggle room that we do have, if we use it the right way, I think is a recipe for success. I mean, the problems are blatant. We know what's going on. Let's fix it. Why wait? Why wait administration after administration after administration? Well, there was a um, 7-Eleven on West Street was sold from a. It was sold to an Indian company from corporate 7-Eleven. And I think when 7-Eleven first came in, they had some agreement that they had to employ public housing residents. Mm -hmm. And that did not transfer when they sold it over. And I remember there was a little bit of a protest there because uh, some public housing community residents were being fired for the new new owners were coming in and putting in family members and their own employees. Mm -hmm. And I went and talked to them and they were lived over in, um, I guess, Oberry Court. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, have you talked to your alderman, Fred Payone, which I believe it's in World Ward 2. And they said, "Who, who, who the hell is that? And I said, well, that's your alderman. Yeah. And he's like, hey, no, no, Kenny Kirby's my alderman. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, that was, uh, you know, I mean, and obviously Ward 6 does represent a good portion of it, mm-hmm. of the public housing in the city is in Ward 6. But I, th- I think there's that, it was a perfect instance, a perfect example of like, this is a guy that knows my needs. Mm-hmm. And regardless of this geographic boundary, and as you said, I think it's a great idea for businesses as well. Yeah. I think like the Eastport uh, community meetings, we've... Um, tip of the iceberg here. Oh, I thought we solved everything. Shit. <laughs> you know, started a conversation, but I think there's a lot more depth that we can go to. And yeah. we're going to be talking with the police department specifically about, you know, how they handle these things mm-hmm. coming soon. But I would, uh, if you're interested, I would love to have you back and sit there and, you know, let, let's let's continue this conversation. Yeah. See where, where you're going. Yeah, you're fun. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. No, this was amazing conversation. <laughs> you know, and, and I think the you know, there's some people that are out there that are just looking to cause trouble. Mm-hmm. Looking, I think the division works for them for whatever reasons. And, and I think that, I don't know that that's the right way to do it. I think you've got to turn around and as you mentioned, Dewan, on the Eastport Neighborhood Forum, you know, and probably likely because what you said, Tim, is to put your name and face out there, it tends to be a fairly civil conversation. Mm-hmm. There's some slips here and there, but generally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. O- overall overall it is. And I think that's that's the way we really need to do this. I think that's the way we're only going to make some, affect some change yeah. uh, to be able to do that. Hey, d- just out of curiosity, what, when you, after you were pulled out, did you get a ticket or did you get a warning? Um, I got a ticket. $90. $90? i am going to try to fight it in court. <laughs> yeah. I am. Because the t- it said I was on a street that I don't even remember. I pulled up. <laughs> I was so drunk I had no idea what street I'm on. <laughs> I pulled up Apple Maps and I'm like, Brashears? Like, I don't even remember going down Brashears. All right, Brashears is on the back side. That's on the Spot Creek side. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't. It was, the, t- the ticket said incident of location, Madison. Then it said Brashears, and but we were pulled over on Bay Ridge, so I don't know what's. <laughs> I honestly have no idea what's going on. You were driving your car, right? Not the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <fair enough>. yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, Dewan Gay, thank you very much for your time on this cold. Yeah, this Saturday is great. It was great morning. to, yeah, this to was have amazing. sit down and have a good talk with you. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to do it again. You've got my numbers Definitely. and everything else. Anytime you want to do it, uh, let us know and let's keep it going. I'm curious to hear what the police have to say next week. Yeah. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And don't eat Domino's pizza. <laughs> This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen.
Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. <laughs>